I guess first I'd like to say the fact that I'm doing the training and not a product expert like Joel is one of three options, I think. Um, one, there's something wrong with you people. Um, two, you don't see me enough anymore and you're wanting to get me in here another day. Yes, that's it. Um, three, you're just messing with me and I don't know which one it is, but here we go. Could be all three. 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 Yes, my name is Jeff Chirac and I'm a member of the KGM sales team. <laughs> Today the subject is FlowSafe. Okay, a, a little pre-training quiz from the pitcher. Uh, Casey, you're not allowed to answer. Um, <laughs> what pilot is that on that valve? What model? Is there any, any way to know? Huh? You are correct, sir. You get a calendar. <laughs> whoa, whoa. How quick, quick identifiers that we'll know when we're done. This is the only pilot that has an inlet in through the side that exhausts the gas to the outlet either here or into the body, but the, the outlet of the gas is either going to be here on a direct mount or out the outlet here. Okay, and of course this is the loading of the gas that's keeping the valve closed until the sensed pressure works against the spring on the pilot and causes that gas to dump off. What about the valve? What valve is that? Greg, you're not allowed to answer. Okay, so here's your options. It could be an F7000, it could be an F84 or an F70 PR. It looks like a three by four. It's either, it's an F70 PR, and it's either a two by three or a three by four because those are the only options that mount the pilot like that. If you go up in bigger sizes, they mount on the side direct. Okay, so we'll come back. I thought you were going to say the size of the Well, I mean, could be two by three or three by four, depends on the proportion of size of the pilot. Is your picture a scale? <laughs> if it's a scale. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this thing to work. All right, so I'm going to start by talking about something other than flow safe, but relates to it. Okay, I know it circulated around the AGA um, information where they were strongly encouraging that um, everybody get on board because um, once legislation basically becomes law, that you're, they're going to have a, a year out there in these distribution systems that have um, worker monitors instead of relief so that they can prevent um, losing product by doing something other than a relief. Um, those things are going to basically be illegal. They're going to have to add some additional safety to that. So this is the law, the, the Pipes Act of 2012. This is the, this is the, um, the Senate bill. Um, Senate Bill 2299 introduced by uh, Senator Deb Fisher from Nebraska, Republican. Okay, so that already passed the Senate and it's already being uh, endorsed by the AGA, so the writing's on the wall and you can put the word out to people, they better get on board before they have to, that they need to have a relief or a slam shut um, in addition to the worker monitors and working monitors that they have out there in their systems to avoid that. Um, slam shuts we found are really, really not uh, very popular in our area um, because they have to do relights. So that's something that um, uh, people would much rather if they have to have that, that back up to a worker monitor or working monitor that they have a relief valve. Okay, so they're still not losing customers as they deal with their problem. Okay, I also put the uh, government bill, if you want to track this, the website at the bottom of this slide, okay? Any questions on that? I have another one here that will um, talk about it a little more. Um, so the Code of Federal Regulations, basically anything that our government um, legislates and regulates is wrapped up in the Code of Federal Regulations. I know this kind of as a um, uh, basically uh, get off track for a second. 
Um, because I'm a ham radio operator, I had to refer to the Code of Federal Regulations quite a bit because uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Title 49 stuff, which is the Department of Transportation, which affects transportation of things like gas. Um, but if you're, say, a ham radio operator or you're a tele telecommunications uh, provider or you are a broadcast station, your information is governed by the CFR Title 47. So it lays things down like operating power and, you know, how often you have to identify your call sign and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and things like RF safety. So we're dealing with safety here on the gas side. There's safety features or safety considerations that are mandated in Code of Federal Reg Regulations for radio waves. Did you know that um, even though radio waves are not ionizing radiation, in other words, they don't like hit your body like a neutron and cause damage to a cell, which could cause it to split in a damaged way like cancer would, especially in the areas of your body that um, you know, rapidly uh, um, replenish cells, um, that you know, uh, radio waves actually harm your body if there's enough energy by causing those organs to basically vibrate at that frequency and it causes them to heat up and that, that heating causes damage. So in the Code of Federal Regulations, you might want to take a look at, if you're interested in this stuff, there's the website that you can look at any of the stuff that's, that's uh, regulated by one of the government agencies. Okay, So in that case, it's the FCC. Um, so if you dig down into this Code of Federal Re Regulations for Title 49, you'll find out where this is going to go. You know, this is going to be where it's going to regulate, it's going to mandate that uh, safety relief valves are required in those common mode situations. This is what we're talking about, the things that we do every day, moving worker monitors, Co common mode uh, regulators. What I, say, what I mean by common mode is they both function the same way. And it's, it's you know, very much probably preferred to use a Mooney regulator and a Mooney monitor um, and not go with something which operates differently, which is where the, the you know, non-common or you know, um, different mode would be, how it would fail. Um, some of our customers, a few of our customers use one type of regulator as a monitor and another one as a worker because they are trying to avoid the situation. But it's like giving yourself a, a hand, you know, God gave you a hand with fingers on it and a hoof on the other. Most of the time you have a situation where you don't want the monitor to have less capability or function in a way that's inferior just because it's different. So it's much better to go with a relief in addition to this and not go away from this kind of style where the worker and the monitor had the same capabilities, the same turn down, the same performance, and then have an additional safety on top of it, not go with some you know, strange other valve because it's different. Okay, that's that's a that's an inferior solution to this problem. Any questions about it? Regarding the uh, the proposed law, yes. Um, do, you, do you feel that it will eliminate worker monitor, or do you think it will add additional requirements such as? Uh, it's additional requirements all the way because there's still a, a, a lot of the benefit of a worker monitor that, that will be, be gained because they can identify a problem before they lose product. Okay, so that's still important. But there needs to be the what if the, the monitor now fails to lock up. We need that safety. So it's going to be an addition all the way. So we don't want to recommend a reg relief situation um, where they have been using worker monitors because um, you now have that uh, loss of the ability to protect the system and save product. So, and of course there's environmental considerations there too. I mean, we've been for years talking about Becker no bleed valves as an example. I mean, it's not a, it's not a uh, enhancement to dump natural gas to the atmosphere. So we want to make sure it's a secondary situation. And to your point yesterday, Tim, if gas prices start rising, oh, yeah. they're definitely not going to want to lose profit. Right. Exactly. And kind of just to add to what Jeff was saying there, too, with the, the worker monitor and relief is the absolute best setup. 
you know, usually what had what caused that first uh, the worker to fail might cause the monitor to fail too. So you're going to need that relief valve there. But if you have someone out there that's like, well, you know, worker monitor's been great. I know this pipes act is going to force them to either go slam shut or relief. But uh, a, a sales point to that is, you know, some people are have the the mindset of, well, relief valves they always leak, no matter what. They always leak. They always go to vent vent in the atmosphere, or they're a one pop and they they don't seal back up. Well, if you have that worker monitor, um, you know, and you're you're hell bent on, you know, that's good, that's going to work. Well, then you won't have to worry about that relief ever going off, right? That's just a a point to to make about those worker monitor setups. And if someone doesn't believe in the relief because it if it goes off once, it's going to leak afterwards. That's that's just some people's mindset, you know. As far as you know, the relief valve has advanced over years, especially with the pilot technology, <clears throat> to be better seated and also a lot more reliable and repeatable. So just just to add to that a little bit. And this and this protects our customers too. That no matter what you say, you can't convince them to put like an Apollo filter in front of this stuff, and they think that their regulators are going to be the strainer and the regulator. And so they lose the front one because trash gets in it and it can't, you know, lock up, can't close off. And eventually, since there's trash still blowing through, the second one goes. So in those instances, this is really, really good. This regulation will basically require them to do the right thing. So, all right. So within this presentation, we're going to talk about the F70PR series. Um, it's an ANSI 150 application. It basically will allow us to go with those low pressure settings, 10 inches of water column we can set as a relief with that low pressure pilot with a bigger surface area, up to five pounds. And once we get to five pounds, we switch to the other pilot with uh, you know, the smaller diaphragm, give tighter control to higher pressures, obviously not, um, that, that's too much surface area for those higher pressures. So we switch to this pilot and they start at one and a half by two inches, um, like this style here. And they go all the way up to the 10 by 12s. 12 by 16. 12 by 16, excuse me. 12 by 16 body size. And they're offered in a variety of elastomers, a common obviously, since we're talking about usually using these in um, with our customers as natural gas, is with, with Buna. And there's obviously Viton in some situations, but the majority of them, it's, it's a, it's a Buna uh, seat and seal situation. It uses the F100 pilot. Both of those are an F100 pilot. Um, just obviously different uh, diaphragms in this instance. Um, and they're common because of the pilot. They will open at about, you know, real close to the set point. It's a modulating design, so it'll start to simmer right before it lets the, the relief open fully and it takes to about 5% overpressure to basically open fully. So when we're talking about the, the sizing charts and the brochures that you're looking at, when you consider what that, that volume is for the set point, just realize that um, you know, you've got to consider that 5% overpressure. So um, factor it in. Okay, These must be able to vent to atmosphere because there's no backflow preventer. Again, it doesn't matter because typically where we set these, that's what we want them to do. We're going to vent them to atmosphere, not into you know, uh, some storage tank that potentially could have some pressure there or something like that. So you wouldn't use an F100 in a situation where you are concerned about backflow. Okay? Um, and then these are not ASME uh, code stamped reliefs, which gives the customer and us a lot of flexibility to make sure that you know uh, you know they can change springs if they need to change springs to make sure that their set point uh, for the relief will go where it's designed it doesn't have to have the safety seal on it um, to keep from them tampering with it after it comes from the factory okay the, the other models that do that I mean um, that's done for a reason and they basically aren't supposed to get in there and be messing with the spring. Okay? Yeah. So, say, uh, contrary to that, this, this F7000, 8000 series is an ASME uh, stamp valve. Yes? Yes? 
Before we move on, can you repeat the spring ranges for both the high pressure and low pressure pilots? Yes. So the for this one, the low pressure is from 10 inches water column up to 4.9 pounds. And for the high pressure, when you switch over to this pilot, it's from five pounds up to the, the you know the pressure rating of the valve, which is an NC150 valve, so 285. Okay. All right. So then there's this model. This model gives us the capability, basically, to, to replace the um, the F70PR HP because it starts at set point to 15 pounds. Um, Available in a one by two, which you would, would expect that you'd actually have a smaller valve option because we're going to talk about more pressures here too. Um, and then 12 by 16 body size. ANSI 150 through 2500. Okay, so this is where we get into anything above a 285 PSI set point. ANSI 300, ANSI 600 uh, sets, we're going to spec an F7000. Okay, the 8000 is available too. It basically is different than the 7000 only in that you can control the size of basically the flow. The, there's an orifice uh, match that you can use to limit the total amount of flow, whereas the F7000 is full bore. When, when, you know, as far as the body's concerned, when you want it to relieve, you want to get rid of the pressure, um, that's what you're going to utilize. And so typically that's what we end up selling to customers is the F7000. It can have a variety of pilots on it. The standard pilot is an F200, which we'll get into you know, uh, a little farther down in the presentation, which is a snap acting type pilot. Um, most of our customers prefer the F100, so it keeps it consistent with the pilots being the same on either their F770PRs or their F7000s. Um, and there's also an F300, which would be a very good option. It's similar design to the F100 with added features. It has an ability to adjust the proportional band. So kind of like the restrictor on the Mooney regulator where you can actually adjust, you know, um, you know uh, the opening and the resetting. It's got the ability to fine tune, um, you know, uh, that information to the valve. And uh, it also has a built-in backflow, backflow preventer in the pilot. Okay, so there's some added features with a 300. Uh, there's also an F500, but I mean, I'm not going to spend time on it today. I think it was designed for offshore applications, specifically to replace uh, the Anderson Greenwood style. Um, it was to, to match it, is what it was. So the, the just a little bit about the 500 pilot is, it's a so all those pilots up there, besides the 200, the F100 and F300, they're all flowing modulating pilots. You got 500 is a non-flowing modulating pilot. So what I mean by that is, so when it, when the valve's operating and it hits its set pressure, say with a 100 pilot, it's going to be unloading pressure off the dome of the piston faster than it's loading, so that way the valve can open. So with the the 500 pilot, it's going to the pressure's going to creep up. You're going to get the set pressure or close to set pressure, about 98%, and it's, you're gonna notice the gauge stop. It's gonna kinda stop, it's gonna lock out the pressure from continuing to feed the dome of the valve. And it's gonna start exhausting the pressure off the top of the valve, so that way it opens um, <clears throat> at nameplate set pressure. Now the reason why we did that was, again, to match Anderson Greenwood, and for the offshore applications, you know, they're, they're, they're limited on their resources out there in the Gulf or wherever these platforms are, and you know, nitrogen bottles, they don't want to be carrying you know, multiple nitrogen bottles all over the place to test all these PSVs on the platform. So the 500 Pilot's a good way for them to you know, save their resources of nitrogen. Yeah. Why yes, would you use the 8000 if you were trying to capture what, instead of just sending it all to atmosphere? Well, as, as we go up in pressure, you might want to have a smaller orifice to stay in a certain body size. So. Um, yeah, or just to add to that too, just to, to get an accurate, you know, so, so the valve isn't oversized for the F8000. So that hits all your API orifice sizes and also everything in between because you don't want the, bigger is not always better. You know, when the valve's oversized, it's going to cause a lot of tremendous amount of damage to the valve. It's going to rapid cycle and it's not going to completely open as it should. 
so the pressure could continue to build. <clears throat> and then one thing I want to point out too with the, the difference between the F70PR and F7 and 8000 is you know, how set pressure is defined. Set pressure is defined on the F70PR as you know, first exhaust. So when that pilot first starts to bleed, you're at your set pressure. And for the F7000, it's main valve piston lift. So keep that in mind. When you know, you're out there and you say you have a customer out there, you have a, uh, a set pressure of 300 PSI and you got a F7000, which is perfectly fine, and they're like, well, this thing's starting to leak before it hits 300 PSI. And it's leaking about you know, 95% of set pressure. Well, it's actually doing its job because that means that the main valve is gonna to start to lift at nameplate set pressure. So the valve's not leaking early, it's doing its job by exhausting the pressure off the top of the piston in order for it to lift at nameplate set pressure. And Where it's set up that way because that's the ASME standard yes. that they're code stamping. On, yes, right? yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, just, just to keep that in mind, and you know, you could use, and one other thing I, I pointed out to a couple people uh, the other day was, you know, say the piping is for a, a two inch 300 ANSI or two inch 600 or yeah, but the pressure is not going to be, it's going to be a 60 PSI set point. So why would you go with that heavy a flange? Well, obviously they don't want to rip out all that piping and put in new piping. Um, but the two inch F7000 is going to have a different flow capacity than the two inch F70 PR because the bore sizes are different. Just keep that in mind. You just want to make sure you double check uh, the flow capacity. Just be like, well, you know, this F70 PR will flow this at, at 60 PSI, so the F7000 2 by 3 should flow this at 60 PSI. That's, that's not the case. And when we get into the flow size stuff, you can play with that. I mean, because you're going to get options when you put in your set point, if an F7000 or an F70 PR would work you'll have the ability to pick. And when you pick the valve, then it's gonna tell you the capacity. And it'll, you try that and you'll see the, the capacity is gonna be different for mm -hmm. the same condition. Okay, a couple of other things, we're not gonna dwell probably any more on it than this slide, but I want you to be, to be aware of some of the other offerings that they could uh, come up and you could support a customer with. Um, you're all familiar with the Mooney uh, Model 87 surge reliever. Okay, well, um, it's a very long lead time item. This uh, F9000 series is to do that type of work, okay? You have a dome which basically gets charged with nitrogen and when uh, a fluid hammer, um, you know, would come through the system instead of tearing it up, this valve will basically give it immediately a, a place to put it off into another tank or another line to prevent damage downstream in a liquid situation. So um, it comes up and you're dealing with relief for liquids, remember the 9,000. Yes? Jeff, what type of liquids we were talking about? Crude oil. Water? Water. Water, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, you're just gonna uh, pick the, the proper like seat and seals for whatever the, you know, the product is. Okay, and then the F80 series, this again is something where we may spec them, but this is not like you're going to um, sell these to replace um, like a 289 type relief, okay? Um, it's a specialty relief. It would be more like you're replacing a, a, uh, the old Mooney specialty regulators that, that once were an offering. It's for it's different, you know, special different types of gas, you know, unique process conditions. And they're ASME code stamp. Um, they have a, a lot of ability to deal with, you know, back pressure, high temperature, low temperature, things that, uh, you know, you wouldn't even think about specking one of these simple, uh, you know, self-operating reliefs to do. Okay, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it. So um, where they come into play is from 15 pounds up to 10,313 pound set points. Um, half inch through three inch body size combinations. They, they are snap acting, so they're gonna go full open at set point and uh, reset very close to set point. If it's an F84 model, it's because we're, we're specking a plastic seat, which tells me 
you're going to use it a lot of times with really high pressure because a hard seat um, tends to be when you've got a lot of pressure and um, a, a soft o-ring style um, seal is not going to hold up to that tremendous amount of pressure. Okay, and then it could also be because of the nature of the, the gas or whatever that you're trying to use. The F80 size, uh, F85 is the O-ring seat style. Um, and then the 88 is a balance against back pressure situation. So um, this actually came up, um, University of Tulsa bought a valve that they were using for a special application that had to have a, a certain amount of back pressure um, that the valve would constantly feel. A lot of times too, they may need a rupture disc below it because of the nature of the gas may be really hard on the seals and they don't want the, while well, the relief is just sitting there, you know, waiting to do its job for it to basically be in that in caustic environment for forever. So they'll put a rupture disc below it and it won't, it'll, it'll blow below the set point and that way, you know, the only time the, the relief is going to see that type of uh, condition is when it's going to be needing to be ready to go itself. Okay, so you're going to see on the sizing too, um, it'll ask if you're specking for a rupture disc as well. Okay. Um, all right. Questions on this? All right, so these are the things, you know, how it always is that we have to kind of like pull the customer through to make sure that we help them get the right thing so that it does the job for them. So these are the kind of things that, that we kind of need to, to know. We need to know what their set pressure is. We also need to know what the MAOP of that downstream system is. Is there a room to, to have some buildup before that MAOP is reached? You know, how close, to the, how, how close are they asking for the set point to be to that MAOP? And it's going to obviously factor into what solution we offer back. So we need to know that. Um, the type of service, you know, is this natural gas, is it something else, you know, um, the more specific that they can be, the better we can help them. If they have an H2S problem or whatever, we want to know that. Okay, the required relief capacity, this is obviously going to be something that's going to factor in if they have a worker monitor set or whatever, we're going to factor in what kind of regulation is in front of this so that we can determine how we protect the system when they fail. Okay, so we're going to have to know that required relief capacity. The temperature range that could be experienced. The body type and connection. So, you know, we, want to, we don't want to derate the system with what we select for the relief valve. So we want to know what, you know, their, um, what class and, and uh, schedule they have and what we need then to put on that inlet side of that relief um, so that it matches that. Um, if there's a back pressure requirement. If um, we're talking about the pilots, we talk about different types of pilots, F100, 200, 300. We want to kind of understand whether or not, you know, we want to have something that's modulating or snap acting as preferred. For most of our customers, the F200 is not the preferred solution. So we tend to system for the F70PR. And then it always comes down to this, the application. You know, is it a short run system? Do we need to actually add a sense line so that the relief knows earlier than its own body what the overpressure condition is? You know, those kind of things. We want to ask as many questions as we can to pull out the devil in the details here, okay, so that we get a better solution for them. All right, and so you have a tool, and it's actually in, uh, you know, the catalogs where you can kind of be reminded of some of these things that you can uh, put put in a worksheet form um, or have them start by filling out for you. Uh, obviously don't just blindly let them fill out a couple things and then like send it in for a quote. Do due diligence and make sure that they you know considered or gave you the information that we're talking about that gives us the best solution. So just bear in mind that that's in that catalog and you guys all have a copy of it. Okay, um, I thought I'd just take a minute to talk about the selection of seat and seals because there's really not any place like in one source that I saw that kind of like gave you kind of a summary of all of it. So I kind of tried to build that for you. So 
the top part here, these are all the, the elastomers, the O-ring style seats, okay? So that's going to be good for an F70 PR or the 7000-8000 series or the F85 up to um, 1480 PSI for the 7000-8000 series. Uh, oh, for, for either one of them because you don't want to use a, a O-ring seal above ANSI 600. That's why I noted that, okay? So if you go above ANSI 600, you're going to want the hard seat. So that's going to cover the 7,000, 8,000s up to 6,000 PSI. And also then the F84 and the F88, which is a balanced style self-operating self regulator. It's in the F80 series, okay? So when you have a situation of back pressure, you're going to go to the F88. So under that, you've got Teflon and Kel F and Vespol and Peak. Most of the time we're not playing with these unless we're in the F80s, quite frankly. So we're, we're, we live really in this range of using the Buna or the Viton, but if there's really cold temperatures to be anticipated, you've got the EPDM option, which is really good for low temperature. And it also has got um, really good like H2S and um, like ammonia and glycol resistance. Um, and then CalRes, ChemRes, which is really good for high temp. So you can get outside this box, which we spend most of our time in, with a couple other options here. And also for uh, high abrasion resistance, the polyurethane, okay, also uh, high chemical resistance. So I, I thought I'd give you a place to kind of reference some other options if, if you are having a conversation about application and it started getting outside our normal box. Do you have any comments about that, Joe? Yeah, the one comment I would make is you're not really limited to 1480 for, you know, your last merge for the F7000 and 8000 also. You can, we've done them all the way up to 6000 PSI before with the 2500 ANSI inlet rating. So just, just keep that in mind. Uh, would you prefer to go plastic? Probably, if you're getting into those higher t uh, pressures there. But for the most part, you're good to use elastomers throughout the F7 and 8000s. Okay, I'm um, not going to spend a great deal of time on this, but I wanted to give you a frame of reference of, you know, where are some of these, like, uh, requirements as far as what the relief valve must meet? Well, the um, uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers has set up some recommendations. So if you have a set pressure up to 70 pounds, they're saying you got to stay, you know, 5 PSI below the MAOP. And of course this is for an ASME code stamp valve, right, which starts at 15 pounds. Um, if it's an F70 PR, we're just trying to stay below the MAOP. This isn't really going to affect what you're specking. Um, between 71 and 1,000 pounds, they're saying you need to have um, basically a minimum uh, room, safety room, from the MAOP down to your set point at 10%. Okay, and then for above 1,000 pounds, it's 7% below the MAOP. So, um, basically, you're going to get a caution. I noticed this caution come up when you're doing sizing, and it'll say basically if you are okay with, you know, something that's, you know, like um, outside this realm. Most of the time, with F70 PR, you know, as long as you're making sure you're not going to uh, reach the MAOP, I think you're okay. Um, I already made note of the fact when you're doing sizing with the F70 PR and the F100 pilot to make sure you basically provide for that 5% um, uh, overpressure. And um, basically, um, when it talks about flow safe standard, their, their standard is that you can operate the valve with, um, without leakage at the system uh, operating pressure greater than 90%. So at some point above 90%, it's like 97%, it's going to start to simmer, okay, but it's not going to leak below that, and then it's going to have a certain amount of requirement for reset, depending on the pilot, below the set point, so you get that full, you know, shut off, um, no leaking. All right, um, soft seated valves have less simmer or warm prior to pop off, and, you know, again, you know, when we're talking about the pressures that we normally are specking, that's what we want. Okay, blow down is the difference between the set point and how far the pressure must drop in order to get that full shutoff. So there's going to be, a, a, you know, a, um, 
uh, a certain value based on the pilot, based on the valve, um, as to when you're going to get full shot off. Questions on that? All right, so if you have it open, you can bring it up, but we're going to play a little bit with um, the flow size right now. Okay, so some of the, some of the things that uh, you're going to have to input here, and this is the website um, that you go to. Um, if you just go to FlowSafe's website, there's a place that at the top, you know, is a little place where you can select the size of your valve and it will bring you in there. You may have to register the first time. Okay. Um, and, and so you get something like this that comes up. All right. So what, what we have in our, our specifications then is what the customer is telling us or what we determine based on our our evaluation, what the relief capacity has to be, what the type of, of media that we're going to be relieving, and what the set pressure is, those are real real important. Some of these things will auto-populate, like the molecular weight, specific uh, heat ratio, gas constant. If you tell it it's natural gas, it will put in those for you, so you don't have to mess with it. Um, and then, once you basically put those things in and hit uh, calculate, it's going to give you a um, capacity of whatever the, the solution is that you pick. Okay, in this case it was a selection of an F70 PR, it's a 2 by 3 and that's my capacity so you can see that it exceeds the requirement. We're going to actually get into doing one here in a minute. So let's do that now. Um, so here's a sizing scenario. Customer wants a regulator um, uh, and a relief quoted. So um, they know that they have to protect the regulator fails. They give you the information about the inlet on the regulator is 250. The downstream pressure that they're controlling with that regulator is 15 pounds. And the MAOP, the downstream system, is 25. Okay. The max flow rate that they they anticipate is 30 MCFH, so they want to set a release set point at 17. Okay, so the first step, we're going to figure out what the actual capacity of the regulator is if it fails wide open. We're, we're going to do worst case here, and we're not just going to accept the 30 and plug that in. We're going to figure out what if the regulator under its you know, normal conditions has to um, handle 30, um, maybe there's, you know, some other situation that occurs that, you know, there's, um, uh, you know, uh, reason to uh, factor in a little safety margin. That's what we're going to do. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to this in a second. The second step is to size the relief. The third step is to make sure that the MAOP safety margin isn't, isn't violated. Um, fourth step is to obviously work up the quote for the valve, so we're going to get into the quoting and pricing of the solution that we come up with. And then obviously the last step is to, if, it, if it's inside folks doing it, to share it with outside sales reps so that they know what's going on and can follow up with the customer and are on, you know, um, ahead of the, you know, the quote. And then to provide the quote to the customer and help them know why you're specking whatever it is you're specking. So this is valve spec. So we're not doing flow, uh, flow size for just a second. I just wanted to take those parameters that we just talked about and show you where I kept with a 49.2 instead of the, what the customer had given us for maximum. So we plugged in his flow rate of 30 uh, MCFH, his inlet pressure, his, uh, uh, this, that actually is, is higher than we should have put, put in there. It should have been 15 pounds. But it wouldn't matter because when you get to, to um, uh, sonic velocity, the, um, the sizing doesn't change if you um, are slightly higher on your inlet pressure. It's going to be the same solution, 49.2 MCFH, whether I put 15 there or 25. And I'll prove that to you here in a minute. So it gives me all this information. It gives me the recommended CG of the valve. It gives me its calculated capacity. It gives me its maximum flow rate if this capacity factor was at 100. So that's what I want. I want to go with that, that uh, flow rate and try to cover that for these FG, 
this FT51 Mooney regulator that's that's uh, going in in front of it. Question about that? We'll deal more with this tomorrow, by the way. We'll do stuff with valve spec. Okay, so going back to this, that's what I'm plugging in. I'm, um, I can plug in the requirement of the, the 30,000, um, that it's natural gas, that it's uh, 17 PSI set point, and notice this this warning I get, ASME section 8 overpressure for this uh, set pressure is 3 PSI if necessary, recalculate. So it's kind of trying to guide me if I'm, particularly if I'm uh, going to use an F7000 application because that um, I didn't tell it, I don't have any way to tell it which one I want, I guess to pick from a menu of, of solutions that meet these parameters, these process conditions, okay. And this is what I'm talking about, this is what pops up. So I, I know it's going into an anti-150 system because talking about the other things that I collected from the customer, um, this solution came up that a 2x3 F70PR was one of the recommended solutions. Once I select the valve that I'm going to use, it will go give me back its actual capacity. So now it pops up 116,638.2 standard cubic feet per hour. Even if I had the 49.2 in a fail wide open situation of the F FG51s, not the 30 the cu customer said, I'm still covered with this solution, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, I want every possible instance to be safe. All right, questions about how I got that? And you guys can size it up just, just like I did and come up and see how you came up with a solution. Okay. Once I, once I do this too, I can actually print that data sheet. If I go in here, it'll ask me, you know, well, what form would you like it in? PDF, you know, uh, what, you know, what format do you want to see this information? Because I can share it with a customer in my sizing, okay? And you can play with that too. All right. Now we're going to go into the details since we picked the 2x3 F70PR. Let's go into the details about an F70PR before we actually go into pricing it. So here are the characteristics, again, with a little more detail of the F70PR. It's high capacity, full bore relief. The one thing that, that a relief like this does that is a necessary component to being safe is it fails open. Some of these other situations where a regulator is used in a back pressure mode as a relief, may fail open, may fail closed. This fails open and that's the safe situation in a relief situation. Okay, so anti-150 valve, no back pressure, no, excuse me, no back flow preventer. Again, we're expecting this, this valve setting to be venting to atmosphere. Set pressure from 10 inches of water column to 285. 10 inches at 4.9 is the low pressure pilot. Above that is the high pressure pilot. Body sizes again from the inch and a half to two up to um, the 14 by 16, right? What's that? The uh, largest. 12 by 16. 12 by 16. Uh, F100 pilot, so it's bubble tight shut off till very close to the set point, um, and then it resets 5% below. Temperature range typically um, minus 65 to 400, depending on the soft goods you picked. We talked about that. Um, very simple mounting and tubing. Field test connection is optional. And it is going to have a bracket like the one in our picture if it's a 2x3 or 3x4. And if it's smaller or it's larger, um, and this should be 4x6, didn't catch my typo, 4x6 or larger, it's going to be direct mount on the body. And okay, there's no 3x6. Okay, um, so the construction, and I can actually show you as we go here, but you have a situation with this where you have a, uh, a piston that, it, it, this is the high pressure style piston that's inside a sleeve, or in, in this case the sleeve is built into the body and pass this around. Um, so this piston is basically going to be down on a seat like so, and when it relieves, 
the inlet pressure gas will push that up and it will vent out the outlet. Okay, so that's the setup there. If it's a low pressure situation, maybe that piston inside the, the walls of the body is not, um, uh, you know, going to be sufficient because we need something that's going to be very sensitive to low differential pressure. So it's going to have a different style. So um, this is actually um, now going to be replaced with a more advanced uh, style, but this is the way that the piston would look with it kind of being hollow, um, with the, the pressure uh, being exerted here to keep it shut, and then when it relieves, this assembly will, will move up. So that's the low pressure style. And also with the low pressure style for the, the smaller sizes, a 2x3 and 3x4, it's actually a, a assembled piston that's put together, again, just to take off the, the weight of the chalice style on the, the larger sizes. And, and here's what we, we now see, because we, we talked about the, the picture at the beginning. You have inlet pressure here that's being felt through this tubing that goes into the body of the pilot and cross it straight through. Think about your understanding of how a Mooney regulator works, how the pilot works, where you have an inlet port and a loading port, and it's a straight pass through the cartridge. This is very similar to that, where you have a straight pass through with gas that's basically whatever the inlet pressure being felt is loading on top of this piston. And it also, this is the difference with a Mooney pilot, Mooney pilot has a sense port that gets basically tubed somewhere so that the pilot knows the pressure, right? Well, here, you see this little spot right here, this little, the little canal that actually goes up underneath the, um, the mainspring's uh, plate, so it, underneath the diaphragm, so it's working against the, the uh, um, pilot spring. So you have a situation then. Where underneath, and I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll send this around. This is the, the uh, pilot uh, body. And if you look right here, you'll see from the inlet side, there's also a port that comes up underneath the diaphragm. Okay, so that's actually very similar from that perspective as the Mooney pilot. Because from its sense port, it has pressure that comes up underneath the diaphragm. It's just simply that it doesn't have a separate sense line. It just comes in from the uh, inlet gas that's coming into the body and canals up underneath that diaphragm. Okay? So then when it goes to relieve, once this pressure gets high enough, remember it's been passed through and it's loaded to keep that thing shut. Well, and it's also working against that spring. Once the spring tension, the set point of the spring gets reached, it's pushing that uh, spring up and the diaphragm lifts. This whole little assembly, the spindle assembly, lifts off the O-ring or the, the, the nozzle, the seat of the valve. And now I have a, a gas that can basically dump to the underside of the diaphragm, which is kind of like, just like a Mooney regulator opening, right? An unloading design. Very similar where now I got, yes, it's got gas trying to load it inlet pressure, but I've also got gas dumping here, so now I have a differential pressure, and the underside starts to win out. This is where I get that simmer, because it's, it's trying to balance, but once the, the differential pressure gets enough, boom, it goes, right? So I get, I get uh, the gas escaping when the pilot lifts out the outlet. Okay? Questions on this? All right, I don't know what's funny in the back. <laughs> Jim dropped it. Okay. So, um, anyway, um, so we've already talked about the low pressure design, but here's an example of where you see, um, you know, a, a, just a lighter construction, a, a, a two-piece assembly um, instead of just a one solid piston, okay? All right, I think we've hit this pretty well. Uh, let me see if there's anything on this slide else that I want to cover. Let me pass this part around. Okay, 
So you've got the body. Inside the body is, is this little cartridge. And this is essentially your seat, your orifice. And this has a little O-ring underneath that little retainer. This essentially is when the valve is shut. And the diaphragm has got the spring tension on top of it here. Remember, when I get to that set point, though, it's going to push this off its seat. So that starts the process. When this comes off its seat, that's now going to give a different pathway to dump gas out the outlet. And now the underside inlet pressure wins out. Think about all the valves you know. This is a very traditional uh, design, right? Okay. All right, and we're not going to do a tear down today, but we're kind of like passing torn down stuff around. So just kind of like identifying uh, the cross section of how this stuff is put together. What we haven't addressed yet is selection of the spring for doing this job, which if we're setting 17 pounds, we're going to need to take a look and see what spring needs to go in this assembly that we're going to put that pressure down on. And what spacer, now you have the spacer that's basically in the, the valve that we pulled apart, which is for a set point of 15 pounds. But if we get to a higher pressure, we may need to limit the surface area that, the, that can actually move up and down with the diaphragm. So we put basically a brace around it, a different spacer. So if we pick this heavier spacer, we're going to limit the diaphragm surface area moving up and down to a smaller uh, area then I need a different spacer on the inside that's going to flex up and down. So when I get to above 131 pounds, I have to switch out not only the spring, but I have to switch out these spacers because now I'm going to go to a, basically a small, essentially an artificially smaller diaphragm because now essentially that's my surface area. Okay, so, so up to 285, this is the spacer uh, uh, group that goes in instead of the one that's in there at those lower pressures. So it's not just a matter of changing the spring. So this is the spring that's for 15 pounds set point. If I want to go to 150, I have to also have to change those spacers. So it becomes important for the customer to understand this because we've had situations where they ask for a spring and they put it in and it doesn't work. And then they're like, well, what do we do? You start asking questions about what spacers are in there. Like, we didn't have to switch spacers, right? So they, they didn't fully understand what they were doing. And it's our responsibility to make sure before we sell them a spring that they know exactly what they're doing with it. Okay. All right. How am I doing on time, Jeffrey? You are at your hour. 53 minutes from when you started. But All right. an hour from cool. when they started. Okay, so back to our scenario one. We did the sizing. We did the sizing for the regulator kind of, you know, like I explained the background there. We picked the relief to make, make sure we covered the system and made sure it was going to be safe. And now, in order to actually, you know, put it in a quote, I had to identify the model, right? So, in also your F70PR brochure is this little helpful tool to identify the part number. Okay, so it starts out, obviously it's a pilot operated uh, relief valve, we're doing an F70PR. It's going to be high pressure because we're setting 17 pounds, so above 4.9. So, that's going to go in here, that's going to populate the first group. Then I start trying to identify what inlet uh, size and class I need. O2 for two inch inlet, raised space flange, and then it's going to be 150 class rating, so RF1. This is the outlet then. Three inch, also 150 class, RF or 03 RF1. The body, carbon steel or aluminum option. Carbon steel is what we're picking. Um, this is our standard stock, and of course the 2 by 3 that's the option, and then the, um, basically the piston, the, um, the internals, um, selecting aluminum, obviously in this particular case with the pressures as they are and the natural gas, 
Um, it saves the customer money not to like require stainless steel or what have you. And then Buna seat and seals. There's no indication based on what we did when we got the customer's information that we need to worry about like the seat and seals being attacked by some caustic gas. So in this case, they say though they want 300 MCFH relief capability at a 120 psi set point. The MAOP is 150, um, and the existing piping is 2 inch 600 class. So step one is we're going to basically just inquire to be sure the worst case scenario doesn't require a higher flow, um, and then we're going to move to step two. Um, we go into the sizing and we, we're going to select a valve, so let's do that. We'll come back to this if we need to. So same, same deal, right? I'm going to plug in my capacity, I'm going to plug in my set point, I'm going to plug in natural gas, and now I get a solution of an F7000. It gives me an F70PR solution, but I can't use it because it's an ANSI 150 class valve and the customers told me he wants 600. Okay, so. Um, that's why I'm picking the F7000, which is going to give me that capacity that Joel was talking about. It's going to be different than if I picked an F70PR. Okay. So it gives me, because I picked the F7000, the 46,000, uh, eight, eight, I'm sorry, 468,592.2. He only needed 300. Got plenty of room, even you know, adding another 5% for my F100 pilot I'm planning to put on this, and still stay below the MIOP. Okay, so no problem. Because if, if I went to um, 125, I'm still below 150 MIOP, no problem. Okay, so let's talk about, since we've picked an F7000, let's talk a little more about an F7000 before we go through pricing it. We didn't talk about this last year. Okay, some basic characteristics of the F7000. High capacity, full bore, very sim similar in that respect to the F70PR description. Um, the control performance is going to be relative to the pilot. So I have pilot options here. It's not just like the F70PR words, an F100. Um, there's a, um, a back flow, flow preventer and a field test connection that are standard options. However, the standard option that it's referring to has an F200 in the price book. Okay. Typically, we're not going to employ the F200, which is a snap acting type pilot. We'll talk a little bit more about. So we're going to have to either accept that they're not part of this bill, or we're going to have to put prices back in and buy them again. Okay. The ASME code stamp. That is basically going to be why we don't stock these, because once we select that one that's going to be for our set point, the factory puts the right spring in, they test it so that they make sure that it's going to function and, and relieve at that set point. And we don't mess with it, the customer doesn't mess with it, and it's safety sealed. So we can't stock them because how many of these would we have with a 120 PSI set point, a 150 PSI set point? And if we didn't get a customer say they wanted that set point, we can't do anything about it. So. Then, then this becomes how quickly can we be responsive to get them what they want because they always are going to be used to our F70 PR solution which is in stock and just because they change the ANSI class of the inlet they're thinking oh well you guys should be able to come up with that fast too we need it okay so talk about the uh, options one by two up uh, up to 12 by 16 pilots always direct mounted so that was one of the reasons why we knew in that first picture it wasn't an F uh, F7000 because it was on a bracket. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, top entry for ease of access. Since it never has the bracket, it doesn't have any anything ever going into the the uh, top plate, the cap. So it's easy to get in there and do maintenance and, and inspection of uh, you know the body from the top because I don't have anything even untube. All right, so the F7000 with the 100 is our standard. Or we talked about the three, uh, F300 with its um, proportional band adjustment, which is really cool. If we selected that, then it would have a built-in back flow preventer, which we don't typically select the 300 because we don't need it. And, you know, so 
Um, that's usually not where we go. Plus, it's more consistent to kind of stay with what customers already have. They're more comfortable with, so we stick with the F100s. Um, and then we're also making sure we pick the right soft goods. If it's just a standard situation, we may end up with Viton anyway um, as our selection because that's the way that the pilots and the bodies, the F7000 bodies are stocked in Houston. And so if I want a four week delivery for a customer that's saying they want something right now, and that's the fastest I can get it, I have to put Viton in it. And therefore I have to pay the adders to uh, get Viton so that I can ask for that delivery. Otherwise it's 14 weeks. If I pick Buna, which is the standard in the price book, I have to pick 14 weeks. Okay. Um, so this, this, you know, something we can discuss, but um, when, when we're talking about adding in, when you talk about having to put the F100 stainless steel on and buy it in place of the 200, which is standard, and put Viton in to the pilot, the seat, and the seals, the total adder, basically for our cost, is it adds $1,571.87 to the standard valve, just to get back to the same thing. Okay, so that, that is a concern. If it's an issue with competitiveness against other product lines, then we need to give that feedback to them, okay? Because we're all in the same business of uh, supporting this product line. This is my uh, former Marine Corps days. I remember this, this quote. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will suffer a defeat. Talking about against competition, specking something in to our customer there. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, then you're a lot of our competition. You will succumb in every battle. Okay? This comes from uh, basically someone that the old emperors of ancient China used to advise them on strategies of war. Um, it's not a war per se, but it's really kind of the same thing. We're, we're not the only show in town. There's other options out there. We have to understand the capabilities of those things and what the, the other vendors are doing, and we need to beat that with better service and you know those kind of things. So price and availability are issues for us. All right, this, these are just standard uh, offerings that are on the Emerson website. Okay, comment? Yeah, I'll just comment about the F7000 just to rewind a little bit about, you know, you, you said you can't stock them, you can stock them. We can assemble and build them to not be ASME code. We can set them like a F70PR, we, we've done it in the past. We just need to know that ahead of time so that way, you know, we don't stamp the valve. So that way the customer can go in there, make their changes and uh, so forth. So if we do that, um, we would be able to come up with a solution that is with a Buna seat and seals, F100 pilot, uh, four week delivery and save um, both us and our customers some money. The four week delivery would be um, slightly challenging only because we don't, they're not sub assembled in stock that way in house mm -hmm. because they, you know, uh, they're already, you know, hydro tested and all that. Just, you know, they're still going to be built per ASME code, but if we're told ahead of time, hey, this doesn't need to be ASME, um, you know, we'll still use those bodies actually. Uh, but again, just our setting of the pilot, we will make it a non-code valve so that way they can still tear into it and uh, make their set point changes as need be too. So time-wise, what's that say if it's not for we? Well, it, it would be a stock item that way. So yeah. we would save the customer like we do with the F70PRs. Um, but then would we save the money of not having to pay for an ASME code stamp? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Short answer. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Right. Because it's still going to have all that built into it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with the F7000, like I said, the standard, standard offering is a, a field test connection here. Usually the way that we purchase it with the F100, though, that's not going to be there unless it's requested. This is that standard. So let's talk about the standard for a minute, the F200. You'll know an F200 like this is an F7000 
one by two. Let's see where to put it for you guys. All right, with an F200 pilot on it. Here's how you immediately recognize an F200 pilot. You see where the field test connection is on there? Notice it doesn't it doesn't bring the gas into the side like on an F100 and pass to the top of the piston. It comes in the bottom. So it's acting basically through this this uh, spindle assembly directly on the underside of the diaphragm. Directly. So if this thing's gonna exhaust, once it loads gas on top of the piston, it this is where we're talking about that whole issue with the vent. The gas that's on top of the piston, when that finally gets pushed up against spring pressure, opens a pathway to immediately discharge everything that's on top of the piston out that exhaust. So where that was a, an inlet uh, on an F100, it's the where the exhaust sits on an F200. And it's why it's snap acting, because when that thing goes off, everything comes off and immediately the, the underside pressure can get out. Okay? Downside is, longer uh, blowdown. To get that thing to reset bubble tight, it's, it takes you know, a few more percent, typically, right? Five, no, factory set is seven to 10%. You know, we, can, we can adjust it accordingly, you know, from five to 20%. Obviously, no one really wants to go at 20% blowdown because you're just losing that much gas. So it's just, you know, factory standard is seven to 10, but we can go as tight as five. So you know, in a world where we're getting the customer to accept losing product for the benefit of safety, we're not typically going to spec this because that blowdown is an issue of losing more product than you need to get a reset, which compared to a 100 or a 300. Okay, so that's why we're not using it. That's, a, that's the only reason. But there is a benefit to that 200 pilot. Uh, you can operate much closer to set pressure because that thing is going to snap wide open right at set pressure. It's going to go full lift. You're not going to need that extra, you know, 5% build up and, you, you know, you can operate pretty much right up to set pressure before it lifts as where the other F7000s and everything, as soon as you get closer to that set pressure, it's going to start exhausting so that way it opens that knee plate set pressure and kind of floats there. Okay, so this is the other option we talked about, the F300, okay? So here's what I was describing. Now this time when it comes out of the field test connection, it doesn't go into the middle, it doesn't go into the side, it goes into a, a channel that's just offset of the center. So you immediately can see an F300 pilot by the position of that. And the reason it is because it comes into a chamber that does end up under the, the spring, just like the F100 in that uh, area under the, the, um, the diaphragm. But you have this now essentially like the restrictor on a Mooney where I can adjust the proportional band. Okay, so that gives me that feature if I've got this kind of arrangement. This is also what we were describing in this little channel here. That's the back flow, flow preventer. It looks to me, Joel, you can describe this a little bit, but it looks like something that rotates that when this basically gets lifted off of its seat, causes this, this little um, cylinder to move and open a channel. It's blocked, can't let any gas from the inlet side um, into this channel until, until this lifts and that rotates and that is what let, lets the gas dump out that area which allows it to be a backflow for flow for And it, it doesn't rotate, it slides. It just kind of slides, slides, okay. slides across. So, do, do you have any um, on me? No, just uh, like something we can use as a training on that particular product since none of us have actually gotten into one and we haven't we, spec we any this year. For, for the 300 pilot and yes. the backflow preventer? Yeah. Um, well, just having a 300 pilot to play with that we yeah, can be training on. Yeah, we can give you some. Excellent. Okay, so I pulled this out of the IOM manual. And we talked about, well, what if you wanted to have a sense line that wasn't the little sense from the inlet, right? So what you do, and this would be probably the, you know, the one, all the ones we talk about, is you're going to run your sense line like you do closer to where you're concerned. And you have to have a check valve from where the, normally the gas would come up into the valve. You need a check valve there so that you don't have the gas that's right at the inlet 
that is lower because it hasn't sensed that pressure that is down here where your sense line is from allowing gas to go back the other way. So when you set up your sense line like that, you, you basically need to have a T, have a check valve, and then you can run it in. So now, now the pressure that's farther closer to your concern, you can actually sense it. Are you bypassing an isolation valve by doing that though? Yeah, you are. Would that affect anything if you go to test it? Well, I mean, it's locked. It's locked, so I mean, you have a valve here, so you can you can, you can off your sand. Yeah, yeah, Damn. you can cut it off. That's why that valve is there. But you have to have a valve there. You have to have a valve there. Okay. It's pilot operated, so you see that it's a seven thousand series, so that's why it starts uh, that way. It's this is this doesn't show on this, but then it becomes which pilot I pick. Well, I'm picking an F100, so even though it doesn't list here, the 2 is a 200, the 3 is an F300, the 5 is an F500, that's where that 1 comes from. It's always, always going to be that way pretty much for us. And then the 5 is an O-ring seat. Again, it's always probably going to be an O-ring seat. Um, we want that, that good, you know, tight to set point uh, shut off. Um, and then the, la the number there will the RF is the flange, the number is the fact that it is 600 class on the inlet. Then it goes to 3 inch raised face, 150 class on the outlet. Carbon steel, S7000, we do stainless steel pistons. Um, and then we, we selected for the four week delivery, because we need the, the customer saying they want it, Viton Viton, seat and seals. So there's our standard, if you will. Why is it standard in the S7000s? It's standard for what we buy. Did you hear the part about if we don't pick Viton, <laughs> it takes 14 weeks to get it? So good. Puna is 14 weeks. Yes. Okay. Unless we work something else out, which, you know, we're, that's what we're trying to do. So. Okay. All right, so back to this scenario then. Um, <coughs> what did we do? You know, we took the customer's requirements. Um, we basically um, weren't able to get any other information. We plugged that in. We came up with a solution. It was a 2 by 3 F7000, 2 inch 600 by 3 inch 150. We determined the capacity of that. We checked against the MAOP and the safety margin. Um, we worked up a quote. We went in and did our, our you know, worksheet and all that stuff, worked up a quote and determined what lead time we could expect this to the customer and it would be right now a lead time of some kind because we don't stock them and then we get that quote out to the customer so that uh, you know the information's in his hands and if he needs it fast we expect an order quickly it's not going to be a stock item right now okay um hands-on demonstration unfortunately because of covid i've kind of passed bypassed that um so that concludes my presentation.